In a previous video, it was already explained how to make a direct start using wired logic. In this video, we will explain how to start an electric motor using a programmable logic controller or PLC, and this is known as programmed logic. Surely, you do not find it convenient to use a programmable logic controller to make a simple start of a motor since it entails an almost unnecessary expense. And well, you are right. A PLC is not necessary, but remember that this is just an example for the study of this subject in order to become familiar with this type of device to later make a broader control. If you want to implement a direct start for a low power motor in a real way, it is not necessary to use a PLC. Here the control and force diagrams are shown. We can see that in the control diagram a PLC is used, which uses the graphical contact language known as ladder or KOP. The interesting thing here is how to use this type of controller. These can be connected to the power supply directly with the single phase or two phase mains voltage, it can also be connected with a voltage of 24 volts. For this case, it has been considered that this device will be connected to the same voltage of the mains, which for example can be 120 or 220 volts. This controller internally has a source that allows its output to have 24 volts in direct current to be used in the command or control part. Here we can see that the start and stop buttons are connected to the controller source which is 24 volts. This controller needs a programming language, for this case, we will use the logic program through ladder. Let's see in more detail how this works. The entire ladder contact diagram is made on a computer, then it is loaded to the PLC, but, for the explanation I will assume that it is already loaded to the controller. Here what we must take into account is the physical inputs and outputs that are connected to the PLC. As for inputs we have S1, which is the stop button, it is connected to input I1. S2, which is the start button, is connected to the I2 input of the controller. On the other hand, Q1 is the output where the contactor coil will be connected and Q2 is the output where the start indicator will be connected. The latter scheme, instead of being physically wired, is programmed and works as follows. When the PLC is energized, contact I1 is automatically closed since the S1 stop button is normally closed and sends a high voltage level. When the S2 button is pressed, it sends a high-level pulse that allows the I2 contact to be closed, causing it to energize the Q1 coil and allowing the self-retention through the Q1 contact. This coil also allows the Q2 coil to be activated. Finally, if we press the S1 stop button, it sends a low-level pulse which allows the I1 contact to be de-energized and thus interfere with the self-retention, causing it to stop sending signals to the outputs and everything to return to how it was initially. If you did not understand this explanation, here above and at the end of the video I will leave the links to the step-by-step -step explanation of how the latter language works since there are videos uploaded to our channel. Now let's quickly see how the wiring and connection of the components should be done if you want to do the physical implementation. From the phase output of the bipolar thermal magnetic switch we take a cable to the thermal relay and connect it to auxiliary terminal 95. From output 96 we connect and take the cable to the PLC terminal where it indicates that the line or phase should be connected. From the neutral output of the thermal magnetic switch, we take it to terminal N of the PLC. Remember that for this case I am taking as a reference a Siemens brand PLC, specifically the S7-1200 with CPU 1212C, AC, DC, RLY, since, if you use another series, possibly the external wiring to the controller terminals is somewhat different. Now, from the positive 24 volt output of the PLC, we take and connect it to the S1 stop button. From the remaining terminal we take and connect it to the I1 input of the PLC. The same goes for the S2 start button, but this one must be connected to the I2 input. For the PLC outputs, they are relay type, meaning that we can supply any voltage level, for this case I am going to use the line that takes it to the controller. From the Q1 output, we take and connect it to the A1 terminal of the contactor, and from the A2 terminal, we take and connect it to the neutral of the thermal magnetic switch. From the Q2 output of the PLC, we connect it to a terminal of the start indicator. 
From terminal 95 of the thermal relay we obtain the phase to connect to contacts 97 and 98 and then take it to the warning indicator. From the remaining terminals of the indicators, we connect and take it to the neutral cable either from the contactor or from the ITM. Here we have other more detailed views of how all the wiring of the control part is going. Remember that the wiring shown here is this way so that you understand better, since, if you are going to implement all this in a real way, you will have to use channels and terminal blocks to make the connections and make everything look better aesthetically. For the wiring of the power scheme it is much easier. From the outputs of the three-pole thermal magnetic switch, we take the three cables to the three power terminals of the contactor and then to the electric motor. So we already have both diagrams wired. We can now connect the three-phase motor from the terminal blocks. This circuit not only works for three-phase motors, but also for single-phase motors. In order to load the ladder programming to the PLC, you must use network cables that you must connect to the RJ45 connector of the PLC and then connect it to your computer. There is another way to do it using an access point such as a router and the computer's Wi-Fi, but that is another topic. On your computer, you should have the ladder programming ready, which you should upload or load to the PLC through the network cable. Once all this is done, you will have everything ready and you can do the tests that are convenient for this study. Well friends, that would be all for this video. If you want to know more about PLCs or the ladder language, here at the end and in the description of this video I will leave the link so that you can review and understand better. See you later.